Hello, uh, welcome to second session of Strixhaven School of Mages. We are playing with the Strixhaven supplement for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. And again, this is a setting that is based on the school set that they did earlier in 2021, uh, which is quite a nice magic set and actually got me to buy some cards. So uh, mission, mission accomplished there, uh, uh, even though I am terrible at magic. Uh, across the board globally uh, but uh, I really like the idea I like like magic schools and so we're playing around with that we've done a, a little bit of changes to the setup in Strixhaven but generally we've got that as our our background uh, and we had our characters uh, uh, appear last time we did the sort of setup and introductions on that the first bits of things and uh, we have four characters they are first years here at Strixhaven they are for their relative uh, race, sorry, people that they're from. Uh, they are like late high school, early college age, just in terms of, of imagining uh, that. Uh, so uh, uh, we're gonna start and uh, do introductions. Uh, let's start with uh, this time. Uh, if uh, we could have each person when we go, introduce yourself, your pronouns, your character, their <coughs> pronouns, and just a quick elevator pitch on who you are. Uh, so uh, second on my list, because I try to try to move this so the first person doesn't have to start each time, uh, uh, is uh, uh, Alphonse Fonzi Lyodon. Uh, if you give us the, the introduction there. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Vince. Pronouns are he, him. And I'm playing Fonzi, uh, also known, sorry, Alphonse, also known as Fonzi, uh, whose pronouns are they, them. Uh, and Alphonse is a legacy student at Strixhaven. Their parents are both teachers. Uh, and we've, we've aligned that one of them is on sabbatical, but we haven't decided for sure which one yet. Um, Alphonse is a very bad student, um, but is charming and is able to get people to do what they want and uh, has been able to, to cover some of their lack of natural talent with magic uh, by relying on the spirit of their uh, demi-lich great-great-uncle, uh, who is their patron, Alphonse is a warlock. Excellent. Uh, and then second, we have uh, Talon. Hello, um, I will be playing uh, Talon, a nerdy, uh, uh, sort of nerdy and clueless, uh, uh, what's that? Is that Allen? It's an Allen race, right? Allen, yeah, that's right. Um, an Allen sorcerer, uh, pronouns for Talon. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Pro that's okay. Um, uh, Talon goes by he, him. Um, he's got a missing dad and uh, uh, um, a lot of questions about the universe. Excellent. Uh, and some draconic, uh, uh, draconic heritage uh, in your backstory. Interesting. Uh, next is Fen Oakenshade. Hi, I am Nicholas. He, him pronouns. I'm playing Fen Oakenshade, who is a uh, furbolged, furbolg, um, which is somewhere between a giant and a fae. And... Uh, I am super excited about being admitted to Witherbloom someday, or did we already get admitted to the schools? So this is a good point. So what it is, is as first years, you're admitted to Strixhaven, the school. Yeah. And then starting your second year, you will be able to go to one of the colleges. Now, some of you may have taken a background package, which means that you've like, before you've come here, you've been trying to train in the stuff so you can be the best Witherbloom or best Quandrix student. Yeah. Um, so super excited about that uh, admittance that's sure to come. I just know it will. And uh, love the scarf that I picked up last session that uh, just shows my allegiance to the school. And uh, is Fen he him? Oh, Fen is he him. Yes. Okay. All right. And the tallest of our party members uh, far and away. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that brings us, uh, last but not least, uh, to Wolfgang. Hello, I'm Cisco. He, him, uh, playing Wolfie, also he, him. Um, he is a small um, young man with a large name, 
Wolfgang Constantine. Um, he comes from a family of clerics and priests serving in his town slash city's temple for many generations. And um, he's, um, he's hoping to find true faith here in school and maybe learn a thing or two and uh, bring it back home. Excellent. So we established last time that uh, all of you know one another through various means, uh, various connections that we made uh, between all of you. We'll come back to what that means and what happened last time. Uh, but to remind you, we have a uh, external document. By the way, if, you're, if you watch this, we'll be playing using Roll20. And then we've also got a secondary Google Sheet document that you're using to keep NPCs and some other things in. Just so you know, if we're referring to that, that's what we're talking about. Uh, this is the Google Doc. We uh, established a set of safety tools. Uh, we went through the cats last time. We're using the X card and the open door. But our, our big sort of baseline is uh, the lines and veils. Uh, so what we have right now uh, on uh, our lines and veils limits for lines, right now we have a hard line on homophobia, sexual assault, torture by the PCs, transphobia, and fatphobia. That's just stuff we don't want to see. That's not part of the game we want to be playing. Uh, we have veils, meaning we, we fade to black, or if it's reference, it's reference kind of off screen on dental horror. That's mine. That's fine. I'm going to admit that right now. Uh, uh, drug abuse, uh, sexual content. Those things are, if they appear, we're going to fade, to fade to black on that stuff. And then we've also got an ask first. Now we'll, we'll always check in on stuff that might be challenging or we want to have questions about, but definitely if we have any issue about mind control, and of course, one of the things to Dungeons and Dragons, there are a lot of control spells. Uh, if that's going to be an issue or thing that's going to happen, we're going to always ask first on that, uh, both in terms of player autonomy and about, about effects to, to NPCs. Uh, so those are all on the table. This is a living document, meaning that anybody can add to it as, as we need to. And of course, the X card uh, supports that. So last time you arrived for orientation. Great groups of you went to one of the orientation halls. Uh, uh, a, a great and proud area uh, were, were uh, chastened by uh, one of the instructors, Mrs. Darkbow, who turns out to be one of the instructors for Arcane Assassins, who suggested that you move along and may have noticed Fonzie and known who Fonzie was. You went into this great hall and it was clear that there had been some changes at Strixhaven, some new setups there. They've got some specialty dorms for first year and, and second year students. Uh, and they were going about the dispensation of students to those different schools. And in this, they mentioned four dormitories uh, and uh, there were colors associated with each of them, but you four, as well as a handful of others did not receive these markers that were in any of those four colors, but instead in fifth color in black. And the reaction that you had to that was, uh, shall we say perhaps elevated uh, and, and some, some, some nervousness uh, on the part of uh, the characters. They uh, demolished a ancient reliquary holding uh, symbolic marbles from major persons from the school in the past and sent those scurrying and took advantage of that moment to flee from the building, uh, scatter a chaos campus, uh, purchase disguises of a kind at the campus uh, store uh, there in the biblioplex, uh, and then went to the stacks and uh, did some studies and consultations and found out that in fact, this fifth dormitory does exist. Uh, and uh, for some reason it had been closed for a while. Uh, and that's when Mrs. Darkbow kindly came and, and asked that all of you would accompany her uh, and you would be taken to the dormitory that you would be staying in. Uh, and you all, without any reluctance or hesitation, I believe, uh, followed her 
uh, and arrived at what is clearly a dilapidated, rundown dormitory. It is. It has not clearly been used in a number of years. Uh, and uh, when you arrived, there were a handful of others who were there, other students, uh, first years who were cleaning things up. And Mrs. Darkbaugh announced that this is your dormitory. You could find your rooms and that she would be the house matron uh, for uh, uh, this uh, dorm, the dorm known as Dark Sul. Uh, and so that is where we are, are taking up. We're going to do a little bit of some collaborative building here uh, to establish some things. And uh, then we're going to start to look at kind of what the, the day to day is. Uh, classes, we'll look at electives uh, uh, that you're going to choose from, from that, that list that I gave you in the document. Uh, but we also have. Uh, the chance for you to take a look around and uh, possibly uh, also decide on whether you want to do extracurricular activities, of which there are a number, uh, or uh, even get a campus job. Uh, these come with benefits, and we'll talk about what those, those are uh, when it comes time. Uh, so I have in that document with the lines and veils, I also have uh, NPCs tab for the general NPCs, uh, and then NPC tabs for the students. And uh, I've only put in Mrs. Darkbow with a name there at the top of the regular NPCs, as well as the name of your deity, Wolfie, uh, uh, with, the, with the details that you put in the chat last time. I copied those and dropped those into the NPC tab there. Uh, so what I want to do tonight to start out is go around and I want you to each tell me something about this dormitory, this dark school. It hasn't been occupied in a while. We don't know anything about the details of it. So we're gonna go around and, and do some, some painting the scene, though I hate to use that term, but we're gonna do that, uh, set that up. And uh, I'm also gonna eventually have each of you tell me uh, the name and a basic description on one of the other students who, like you, was chosen to be part of this dormitory. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, Fonzie. Fonzie, you've arrived, Mrs. Darkbow, perhaps in less good humor than she might otherwise have, has, has said that she's going to be taking over. Uh, she kind of vanishes clearly off to get her own rooms together. Uh, tell me something when the camera kind of pans around, sees these students, tell me something we see about this Darsk Sewell dormitory. Uh, so this dormitory is barely being held together, mostly through magical energies. Uh, so as, as like we walk into the main hall of it, um, you know, we, can, we can look up and kind of see through to the floor above it. Uh, and that's because like the floorboards have, worn through, they've broken apart and are being held together through levitation spells. Um, and, and they seem to kind of flicker and occasionally fizz out just a little bit. Uh, we might even see a, one of the students like walking through and like almost falling through the, the floor and then having the panel that, uh, that broke through lifting back up to, to catch them before too much harm is dealt. Gaps in the walls, gaps in the floors. Uh, you look at the doors and things. No door is hung straight. Uh, no window uh, forms a perfect rectangle. Uh, uh, everything is just slightly, slightly out of joint. Uh, as we move around here, as we've seen that, what's another detail that we see about these dorms, about the rooms, or about what else is in the building, or about the the, the layout or the look, uh, Talon? Sorry, um, what was the, what was the question? What do I see? Yeah, what's uh, another? In dorm, in, yeah, in another dorm, thing. Or... Another thing that we see about this dorm here. Um, even though it's dilapidated, you can tell that there were that uh, whoever occupied it last uh, saw fit to put a lot of decor, so or at least a lot of like, um, you know, th things to brighten or to to make the room more pleasing to look. But now they're either rusted or stained or haven't been cleaned in a while. So you get maybe 
um, you know, like this brass ornamental diagram somewhere in the center, maybe on an end table, you know, there was a, there was a, um, a, a nice set of like candle holders or whatever, but they're all, they're all tarnished. Yeah. Uh, uh, lots of that knickknack or, yeah. you know, objects, I mean, good things, but, but yeah. a lot of it's spread around and you can tell that none of the students here, like, that's not what they're going to clean. They're gonna gonna sweep the floor. So so even though they're like getting the tables down, they've still got these kind of not great looking, maybe spider webs on them. Mm -hmm. Spider webs, yeah. And um, I like to give an indication that maybe that these weren't. I don't know how this would ha how this how to describe this, but the narrative I have or story that I have in my head is that these don't belong to like the school. You know what I mean? Like maybe someone else owned them before, and mm -hmm. for some reason they never took them with them when they left. Yeah, when weird collection. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, yeah. You'd maybe expect these kinds of things to be educational or maybe maybe awards. Yeah. So, but they don't look like that. They look like something else, like somebody's stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fen, uh, this is probably a very different place mm -hmm. than, than you've been in before. Uh, what's another thing you you will will notice here? Yeah. So I think my colleagues are like. Uh, the shine and the make in the spaces between. Um, I think I'm quoting uh, Jurassic Park when I say this, but uh, nature finds a way. Okay. So you can see like grass coming up through the boards on the first floor. You can see vines crawling up uh, even onto the second floor. Um, I'd kind of like to place maybe a large tree inside of uh, this building. Yeah, maybe you walk into the what you guess would have been like the the downstairs reception room. Yeah, uh, uh, and is is it is the is the place built around the tree, or is the tree has the tree just uh, appeared in here? I think because of the loose magical walls, the tree has been able to like push walls into different locations and kind of make little cubby holes into some of the neighboring rooms. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say that there's some uh, squirrels with wings that are like jumping and flittering around uh, on the tree. Oh yeah, they 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 definitely occupied this. Uh, that the you guess that the branches must go up into the walls. There's probably gaps in the walls that they then go into. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's clearly a lot of scurrying around. Uh, in here, they're 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 a little upset that this many people have has has shown up and has disturbed their uh, their their usually calm uh, uh, environment. Yeah, uh, Cisco, what's what's another thing that we see here? Another thing that we notice? Um, I think Wolfie um, notices a spider. Uh, as we've already established that there's uh, spider webs here. And I think he rolls uh, maybe like uh, a magazine or, or a newspaper of some kind. And right as he's about to kill it, um, another one of the students like stops him. And uh, uh, upon a closer look, um, the, uh, the tiny spider is actually like a humanoid type spider. Um, so there's like a race of spiders here. Uh, to sort of like share, you know, the room with everyone else. Um, and the spider I'm thinking of is wearing like a tiny little duster. And okay. He's played uh, by uh, Woody Harrelson. Okay. Because of course, and uh, and they have a dialogue about how you know everything's gonna be fine if if they don't mess with the little tiny you know spider people. Um, and then we see one of them, of course flying on top of one of these squirrels and tackling like okay. a mosquito that's like like that big or something uh one of the other students will come over and say mrs darkmau said that that's a old magical creation uh that uh, uh there's some sort of circumstances where we're not allowed to to harm them they're not allowed to harm us, but we're not allowed to harm them. So just, just be careful around them. Uh, she said, check your bed before you lay down. Just, just, okay. 
the uh, the tiny spider played by Woody Harrelson takes a bit of offense to that and says, "Well, you might be created by a magical means. You don't know. You think you know everything." And he just sort of walks, saunters away. I I like it. Uh, so this is this is a larger dormitory than than I mean, you're there are only twelve of you. It's certainly a dormitory for you would guess 50, 60 students. Um, uh, and it looks like you're all first years. You don't see any second years amongst your numbers. So Fonzie, uh, what kind of room are you going to seize for yourself? Something in the basement, something here on the first floor, something up on the upper levels? What, what are you uh, looking I think, for? I think um, not top level because okay. Fonzie makes the guess that Talon might want something at, the, at a higher level. It might mm -hmm. be, it's a little bit of a prejudice judgment to guess that the owl person wants to be up high, but mm -hmm. we wanted to, to keep that aside for him just in case. Uh, but uh, they do want to have a view of campus as best as I can find. Um, I would not be too terribly surprised though if I think that I'm getting a view. And once I've claimed the room, I look out and it's just like the brick wall of another building. Yeah, uh, it, it, at first you're like, oh, this is this is one of those round rooms, you know, kind of grotto almost here on this third floor, get this set up and uh, you get yourself set in there. It, it's kind of hard because the, the, the furniture isn't for a round room. It's, you know, it's a bed and things. And then when you throw open the curtains, dust everywhere you will see that that uh, another building has clearly been built in the in the meantime since this was created and you get like you have to lean this way you can kind of see out onto onto the courtyard out it there. counts yeah it counts absolutely uh fen what kind of room will you take i am imagining a room on the first floor um, and the first thing I'm going to do is push away these walls with their slightly magical um, bindings, right? Because we describe them as really kind of held together by um, that magic. So I mm -hmm. have to imagine that you can just kind of push them away and have a nice opening to the outside and uh, just kind of being a druid um, as close to nature as possible. Yeah. So you kind of kind of uh, uh, maneuver, slide the, the window over, pull open the, the, the wall into this kind of a backyard garden, which is yeah. horribly overgrown. No one has tended to this. It's place. perfect. This is this is how gardens should be. OK, uh, yeah, you've got that that uh, uh, set there. You have to brace some things to make sure that the the, the, the walls don't reclose. But yep. I, I actually use uh, some, they've got these giant pots with like just overgrown brambles and weeds and there's a little bit of a tree poking out the top. And I use those to kind of brace the wall into an open position. Absolutely. Uh, and then Wolfie, what, what do you want? Um, I think uh, one of the other students is looking for like maybe some cleaning supplies. And uh, one of the other students, he or she goes like, I think this is um, a janitor closet. And they open up and it's no bigger than a janitor, janitor closet. It's a tiny cell. And uh, Wolfie's laying on the ground on a mattress that's like this thin. And he's like, check this out. Luxurious, am I right? Um, this is definitely bigger than the cell that he had back in the, uh, in the temple. Uh, are you, are you? Are you staying in here? Uh, yeah, look at it. Look at my bed. And he like pulls it up and it like, like almost cracked. Like it might be big. Uh, uh, I get a desk. Are, are, are you sure you don't want one of the other rooms? Oh, no, no. Nothing like the hardcore floor for your back, baby. Oh, like okay. slaps the stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, uh, can we take these, uh, these, uh, uh, ungents and things uh sure okay Don't sure yeah we better we better clear those out someone else might need those yeah they, they will they will take all of the the alchemical cleaning supplies that are in here uh, uh and and haul them into the the other part of the the, the building here he has like a holy symbol of essen 
and then he has a picture of his family uh on the uh on his desk uh otherwise it's like very sparsely decorated yeah to, to, to basically you stand sit up from your bed and you're pretty much at your desk yeah uh, essentially uh, you, you roll over and you're pretty much at your door yeah it's like a new york apartment like you're going to the bathroom yeah. and cooking at the same time yeah uh, uh all right all right um, and I, I have to imagine then, of course, it like the 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 ceiling on that is at an angle because it's probably underneath one of the one of the, the main stairs. I like uh, it. Yeah. I like it. And there is a window, but it has like bars, and it's like very small. I'm just so yeah, enamored why, with the why window. Would they, why would they have done that? That's probably clearly to keep people from breaking in. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I would like to do we'll, we'll, when when Talon returns, we'll ask about Talon's room. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask and I'm going to come around and uh, I want each of you to give me a name and description of one of your fellow students here uh, that is uh, in the hall here. I have a number of pictures there uh, uh, on the students uh, MPC tab uh, that if you look through, if you want to use one of those, you're welcome uh, to do that. Uh, uh, and, uh, or you can find your own picture, whatever. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that. Um, so Talon. Yo. Yo. Uh, uh, so uh, the others head, uh, to, you know, to get to secure their rooms. Uh, Fen on the first floor sets up and tears open a wall to the back garden. Uh, 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 Fonzie goes up, not to the top floor, but to the next to the top floor. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Wolfie is in a tiny closet under the stairs. So where, what, what kind of room would you choose? Where would you choose it? Um, anything like as high as possible and with a window facing the courtyard or, you know, the common area. Um, ideally, ideally a big window, but it doesn't have to be, you know, and uh, it's basically having a vantage point and being high is like the priority for, for, for Talon, regardless of space considerations. Uh, so you definitely have the sense that, that the, the, the rooms here on the fourth floor, despite their height, uh, uh, are, are the most auspicious, uh, certainly the largest. Uh, and you guess that when this was a full dormitory, these might have been for the most senior students. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you find that there is a main room, uh, large, that has a, a big a triple pane window that looks out onto the, to the courtyard. Sunlight clearly comes in nicely there. Uh, and you can, you can set yourself up in that, uh, you know, a, a still a single bed, but with four posts and, uh, you know, a... Uh, a mosquito net covering it uh, and everything else here is very nicely uh, appointed again like downstairs weird objects uh, 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 on on the mantle and and around and about in here yeah like I think when when Talon moves up there like it's definitely spacious and he, his first thought is excellent enough room to pace back and forth in neurosis <laughs> um, uh, but when he sets up um, he sets up a very modest, humble corner of the entire room, you know, like okay. not necessarily taking up the whole space. Absolutely. Uh, so what I want to do then is uh, come back and uh, let's start with you, Fonzie. Tell me about another one of these students who is here in the dormitory. Sure thing. So we've got this, this meerkat looking fellow in the bottom right of our NPC students. Um, so I, I did see that one of the lines that we have is on drug abuse. Mm -hmm. He looks a little bit like a stoner. So like if, if there's anybody that this is getting into territory they don't like, I can reverse this and, and come up with something else. But I, I see him as uh, an alchemist and he has, he's taken claim of the basement where he has um, a pretty comprehensive lab that he's already put together. This is everything that he's uh, brought in from uh, his, his outside hobbies. Uh, and there's probably 
a lot of illicit work going on in the potions that he's developing. Um, his name is Latte. Sorry, his name is Lot, but he spells it Latte. Okay. Uh, and uh, a pronouns? He, him. He, him. You can see that he has, like, a, as you all had a big steamer trunk, but when he opens it up, it is very much like an alchemical set. And he sets himself up in, in there uh, uh, very quickly uh, and uh, starts, starts arranging things, starts pulling tables over um, and uh, 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 getting getting all yeah he's a very very cartoony uh, 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 character there but he gets himself set up there probably doesn't pay that much attention to the other other dozen uh, 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 students uh, and uh, uh, at some point goes upstairs and actually there's this isn't he's not supposed to live in the basement so he has to go and haul a, a bed down from upstairs he asks Wolfie to help yeah, uh, Matthew nails it in the comments that basically he's he's the Shaggy of Scooby Doo style stoner. Okay, so it's laid back Saturday morning cartoon character more than like anything that's explicit and would get hit by the senses. Absolutely, absolutely. Ironically, I just watched the Scooby Doo movie this weekend, <laughs> uh, written by James Gunn. In case you didn't know that, uh, a very strange. Uh, realization I had. Uh, uh, Fen, who is another student amongst the, the crew that is here in uh, Darsk Swoop? Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm envisioning a dwarf. Um, and I think that this particular dwarf has a specialty in um, what do, what do they call that? The kind of tinker creation of tools and things. Oh, yeah. There uh, is a word for this. Uh, artificer? artificer? Artificer, yes. And I think that uh, I, I, I like the last name Greystone, um, kind of playing with Tordan as the first name or Tordan. Um, I think that he was in the basement first. And he's like, yelling at this person, hey, I was using that table as um, latte or lot. Lot. It's pronounced lot. It's pronounced lot. Um, I, just I get is that like a lot, man. Forcing his way into the basement with uh, the bed and whatnot. Um, and he has resigned himself to like a table in the corner um, and just let lot um do what lot's doing because he's not taking the constructive feedback of hey i was using that table what are you doing perfect so we've got the two of them uh uh down there uh, he doesn't sleep down there though he oh. gladly comes up and sleeps in a room that's just his workshop oh that makes sense uh and uh i'll let you find a picture for for torden uh uh wolfie who else? Hmm. Um, I think I'm going to pick this, what looks like a young man in a robe. Um, and he, oh, he's smoking like hookah, it looks like. Um, and some like red pantaloons or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, Wolfie's going to be um, doing his timely prayers, perhaps a psalm. Perhaps it's sung slash said, and I think this young man is gonna maybe like push him aside and said, "Oh, you religious types are the same. Don't try to convert me. I know what you're about." And uh, maybe as Wolfie's like trying to to be like, "Oh no, it's it's okay. I just Essen just shut up, man." And like maybe he calls some wind or something, and, like pushes him back into his. Uh, his closet, if that's okay with you, Lowell. Sure. Uh, uh, so, so slightly aggressive. Maybe it looks like he's a little bit like older than. He looks a little older. Yeah. yeah, and definitely doesn't like the religious types. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Oh, um, let's go with. Um, Atlantis. 
I'm going to have you type that in there. Like the lost... Uh, lost city of Atlantis. City, but with an uh, E instead of an I at the end. Okay. And I put it in the chat. Okay. Oh, and I'll put it in the uh, character keeper as well. Okay. Uh, and you said he, him? He, yeah. him. Okay. Uh, so we've got this sort of slightly aggressive uh, 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 character there. Uh, uh, Matthew, Talon, uh, tell me about this last uh, uh, of the, the four that you're, you're going to define, because I'll define the other four. Sure, let's see. Um, <clears throat> I think the vision I have for this character is that they are, they fancy themselves a writer. Mm -hmm. So um, he's got a lot of, um, doesn't just have a lot of books, but is always typing away and scribbling away at stuff. And he's very, um, very intense, very like, um, like everything is always so given like, basically if, if he concentrated any further, his brow would like, you know, explode. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the vision I have for him. And I think I'm going to name him Forsyth. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, him is a pronoun? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and an Owlin? Uh, yeah, let's it, go with an Owlin. Yeah, I mean, you got that nice, nice picture there. Uh, uh, do, do you think that he's, like, is this somebody that, that you knew? Uh, are there multiple Owlin communities? Um. I think I've never met this this okay. Alan before, and I think I have. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've never, not met him well, before. Yeah. So what? Like, like, what is the the sort of the difference between the, like the the cultural community background that clearly he comes from that's different from your Alan cultural community background? Um. Whereas my my family has obviously had like this uh, this either academic or or uh, background, I think um, Forsyth over here comes from a, a mercantile background. So his parents for our family were uh, traders. Hmm. So uh, merchant types, uh, uh, a different area. Okay, uh, that gives us uh, our four there. Let me. I'm going to copy this name. Copy. Oh, you've got it in there. Okay. Uh, and uh, I will figure out the other four. We'll have some ladies uh, uh, in there uh, as well, or at least non-males uh, uh, in there for to, to, to round off uh, the set of uh, persons there. Um, let's talk briefly about electives. So all of you uh, have to take the, the sort of six basic classes, uh, which to remind you uh, of uh, basically thaumatology and basic magical theory, even though you know magic, they're going to go over the primer. So you have a, a set of, of terms to work from. Uh, classical civilization since the dawn of time, that's your big history class. The wheel of magic. They're going to look at uh, the, the various colors of magic and styles of magic and their interactions. Uh, arcane terminology. Uh, math and uh, introduction to the dark world. Uh, uh, so those are the, the classes that you are assigned to have and uh, you may share them with uh, your fellows. In fact, I think all the students from a particular dormitory will definitely be uh, uh, in those different uh, classes, probably with a mix of, of others. Uh, so with that in mind, Fonzie, uh, look at the elective list there. And you can see I have a link to that document uh, uh, on the Lines and Veils tab. Uh, what is going to be the elective class that you're going to take? I think uh, Fonzie is drawn to the subtle arts of dexterity. Okay. Because I've, I've become quite adept at the unsubtle arts of dexterity. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, by taking uh, the subtle art of dexterity, uh, class. Uh, once you start into the class, uh, you may, uh, if you are doing something appropriate to that class, uh, and uh, mechanically, 
that predominantly means the sleight of hand. Uh, uh, once per session, you can uh, give yourself an extra D4 uh, on top of your roll. I will eventually make up the, the full report card stuff so we can track all of this. Uh, what, what is it that Fen Oakenshade would take as their elective? I mean, the first thing that happens is Fen's looking through the electives and very disappointed that there's not like um, necromantic studies or uh, the arts of rebirth. And he will settle on animal hus husbandry and survival, uh, survival and mastery of the outdoors as like, uh, well, this is also good. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, uh, again, uh, there are some uh, clearly skills that are related to that. Uh, once per session, you can ask for a D4 uh, a bonus uh, on it. I think definitely uh, survival uh, uh, is there. And then, uh, uh, well, there is no writing skill. Ooh, what, uh, uh, animal handling uh, is mm -hmm. the other one, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the uh, the impression that I have at this point is that the bloom part of wither bloom must be like undergrad studies and then the wither part must be like graduate studies yeah uh that you're still kind of unclear on that uh you know that you will uh that they, they've told you you will have to speak to to a a guidance counselor uh, uh at some point to kind of talk about your your track but uh they will they'll get that that settled uh yeah. Uh, Cisco, Wolfie, uh, what do you want as your elected? Um, so Wolfie's older brothers told him that there was a class at the school called uh, if you can't slash it, just whack it. Blunt Weapons 101, mm -hmm. which is what clerics would normally take. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be available. So he's going to probably ask around much of the snickers of other people. Um, so he'll settle for like slashing weapons. Uh, the, the, he'll go, uh, and what is the swordsman that like the, the, this, the, the sword master instructor, what are they like? We well, have to go and talk to them. I think, um, what, what people are they from human elf Luxodon, something else? I think that they are a very, um, extroverted, very bright color wearing male gnome with okay. a ridiculous mustache. Absolutely. Uh, and his name is Sir Rec Havoc. <laughs> and Sir Rec Havoc, he, he, you know, he's a tall gnome and you're a short human. So uh, 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 you are on the same uh, uh, level. And he's like, yes, what is it you wanted? <laughs> I hear you're signing up for the class. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Are those robes? Robes get tangled in your legs. That's dangerous. Um, yes, pants sir. Pants was... or nothing. Oh, sir, pants. Um, I'm. I have very bad experience with pants. You see. Um, uh, yes. I, 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 I'm going to have to ask about what your bad experiences with the pants. Magical pants, or, um, or just non-magical pants? Because that that's going to make a difference in terms of the story. No, sir, you see, it's the ch it's really the chafing that worries me. And, magical um, chafing or not magical chafing? Um, uh, both, sir. Um, I, it's, yeah, I wonder. All right, wonder all right. I'll just have you tie up, uh, tie up your robes uh, uh, around your ankles just so you don't make any, uh, any problems with that. So he is going to girdle his loins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. 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 Did you want to, I mean, is this what you wanted to talk to me about, robes? I was hoping that you had something not so slashy or pokey, perhaps something a bit more, I don't know, that could cause a bit more trauma. That's what I'm, that's what I'm used to. I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Do you want a wooden sword uh, or a bat? Or are you talking, you want like a, like a mace or a... Yeah. A... Yeah. Something with like a spike or like a heavy thing at the end would be great uh, every semester all right if all you right. don't have one 
No, we have actually, maces. It's it's just I. Before he so, said like we have maces, like he's turned around and yeah. he has actually made a blunt weapon out of like yeah. something lying around. Probably. That's what he's yeah, using. yeah. Here's a training mace. We'll use this for you. Okay. Happy. Oh no, Wolfie. Nice to meet you. Good, good, good. All right, all right. Uh, well, you're doing you're doing uh, yard sweep the first week. Okay, thank you. Seems annoyed that that doesn't bother you a little bit. So, <laughs> Essen, uh, bless you, and he'll walk away. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so that is our gnome uh, weapons instructor. We'll find a, a picture for him. Uh, he sounds great. Uh, what elective do you wish to take, Talon? Um, I think Talon would take the astronomy, astrology, the celestial spheres thing. Let me check that. What it exactly? That's right. Uh, astrology, astronomy, and the motions of the spheres. Absolutely, and uh, that is uh, certainly uh, associated with Arcana uh, as a a, a skill. Uh, use oh. of a d4 on that, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, they they have uh, essentially the equivalent of a magical uh, uh, observatory or magical planetarium where they can project all of those things uh, in the the lecture hall uh, for you, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, so we've got our electives. Let's take our first break here. We'll take ten. Uh, we'll come back. And then we'll do a little introduction, sorry, a little interaction between all of you and uh, uh, like look at some of the classes and then we'll talk about the extracurriculars and, and those kinds of things. Sound good? Okay, back in 10. Uh, so you get your schedules. You'll see that all of you are, are in the, the same basic courses together. Uh, and you'll go and uh, uh, get, uh, you know, to some of the other people. Uh, it looks like some of the other dorms, there's some overlap and some swap around about which other first years you're with. Uh, but uh, the first uh, year uh, class that you have is the Thaumatology and Basic Magical Theory class. Uh, and uh, Fen, you are very excited because uh, when they come in, the instructor is dressed in the colors of Witherbloom, uh, and they are clearly from that that college. Uh, can you roll me a D eight, Fen? Yeah. Where is our dice roller? I was just looking oh, at other resources. Uh, you can do it in uh, in roll twenty. If you oh, go that's to the roll right. 20 yeah, page, yeah, you can pull that up. Okay. Um. And a D ten, you say? Uh, D eight, actually. D eight. I wonder if I can just do it like this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this scholar is uh, what is called an earth croucher, hmm. uh, which means that they are directly connected to the, the powers of the, the, the land. Like that's, that's where they get the source of their particular magics. So Fen, tell me something else about, about this. Like what kind of person are they? Male, female? Gnome, elf, human, something can, else. Can they be like a centipede with a torso of a human? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, 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 like, uh, and I think they have like long flowing robes, right? Okay. Uh, so they're kind of a, a centaur. A uh, centaur. Yes. Centaur. Uh, do they have human features, uh, or 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 more more insect features? Hmm. I, yeah, I like that. I think it's like praying mantis on the top po okay. possibly. Yeah. Uh, so humanoid, they've got these, these, these arms and these hands that you can see there. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you know, the robes that flow out, you can see their tail kind of runs uh, a good eight feet 
uh, uh, back uh, uh, beyond the desk and they've got this, this voice. You can tell that uh, this is people who uh, have had to use magic to translate. Uh, uh, and so, so it comes out a, a, a little bit like when you hear, uh, uh, you know, text to voice. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, it's a little bit like that as, as he, he's talking. Um, what is his name, Fen? Names are the hardest thing. I know. Um, that's why I waited until the end to ask you this. Yes. I need a random name generator to do this. So. That's fine. I think his nickname is Mothball. Mothball. Yeah. Um, and Serpigo, S-E-R-P-I-G-O is a great first name. Mm, I would like help with a surname or a family name. Well, let's, let's leave a uh, Professor Serpigo for the moment, we'll kind of figure out a, a, a last name. Okay. Uh, and uh, Professor Serbigo, uh, uh will we'll, we'll greet all of you. Uh, so this is Thaumatology and Basic Magical Theory. Uh, welcome to the class. I know that all of you are well-versed in magical techniques, at least the basics. So today, I want to offer all of you an opportunity to demonstrate your magic. So, uh, Oaken Shade, Aachen, uh, 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 Shade. Yes, yes. Uh, what would you like to demonstrate for the class? Clearly, he's asking you to, to come up to the front of the room and to cast your most amazing spell. Yes. I remember making magic choices in, oh, chill touch. Um, I, I, say um i've got a pretty good one but it hurts things should i use it on something this is uh hold on this one moment and he will reach in his robe uh and like draws his arm in from the robe and then comes out again and now he has two arms uh and he will present one of the arms to you Please, okay. if you would. Of course, of course. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. That was the, that said, okay, let me, this is uh, operator error. Stand by for just one second. That's okay. <laughs> Hold on, and we will be right back with you. All right. And Ooh. she'll touch so uh like you cast it very well 24 is is a significant role there uh what does that look like when you do do that that chill touch on on that uh insect arm yeah so i think um it's like just a fingertip of mine that turns like icy blue and i touch his arm and it uh just like develops like a frost layer across the uh, entire outside of it. Excellent, excellent. And you hear the kind of the crackle as he'll kind of, kind of, uh, uh, you know, draw that back in. Very good, very good, Mr. Oakenshade. Why, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, it is good to see uh, that uh, we have 
a lot of history is Druidic people. Uh, and uh, please remember my name when it comes to deciding your specialty. I would be glad to listen to you and any concerns that you might have. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I will definitely bend your ear after class. I don't have ears, but yes. Of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, so there's this goes to the basic stuff. If all of you have to, to present a spell, you all you know go through the, the the very basic things. It's clear that they're they're just checking to make sure that everyone can actually cast magics. Uh, uh, with the sense that maybe sometimes people come in and they they panic and are unable to. Uh, so the next class. Uh, that uh, you will, will come to is uh, classical civilization from the dawn of time. This is our, our history course. This is Lorehold. There is a professor there from Lorehold in the, the kind of the, the white robes uh, of the, the, the school. Uh, Wolfie, what is this Lorehold instructor like? And would you roll me a D8 before I have you answer that? Certainly. This will be my first roll ever on a roll 20. Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry, a D10. They have 10 different kinds of Lorehold scholars. Oh. Hmm. It's a nine. That is a nine. Uh, so this person comes in with a lot of books, uh, uh, sets them down. You can see he has books in his pockets uh, uh, or she uh, have, they have books in their pockets. They put down a bunch of stuff. They are a tome wielder is what they are called. Uh, that's a particular kind of lore hold mage who focuses exclusively on magics drawn from, from the great books of the past. So tell me something about this tome wielder. So if you ever watched Robin Williams um, at the height of his like young career where he was wearing like, uh, like rainbow suspenders, and climbing on walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what this professor is like. He walks in with like a pile of books and he, just has, he says, you know, everybody calm down, calm down. Okay, everybody, you, especially you. You know, he throws the tomes and then like, they all fall perfectly on his desk. And then he like flicks one and then like opens one. And he's like, okay, everybody pay attention because we have a lot to cover. And he like, and then something three-dimensional appears from the book. It's clearly magical, but he's drawing mm -hmm. magic from the book, right? Uh, and this is where we're starting right now. And he points and class hasn't even started. He's already covered like the first 100 years of this era, you know, in the first five minutes of class. Rapid fire delivery, ha you know, as, as like, you know, uh, and he knows all of your names. Like the other instructor, the first instructor you had, they were like, mm -hmm. and your who? Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, you, Wolfgang. Page 99. Now, third paragraph. He's like, I, oh, I, I, I stutter. Come, 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 <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Uh, what's his name? Oh, my God. And, and what is he put, uh, like, like a human elf? Um, I think he's a dwarf. Okay. Yeah. And then a name. Um, I think his name is uh, um, I think his name is Brock Leather Pant. Ooh, Braku Leather Pant? Uh, Braku Leather Pound. Leather Pound, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a play on leather bound, okay. but it's a dwarf. So, uh, so he'll, he'll go uh, and he, he says, uh, at one point he stops and he goes, uh, Wolfgang, right? Uh, temple training, literary background, right? Right, right? 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Have you read the uh, 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 Odevor's History of the Ancient World before? Um, he will lie and say he has, but he really has only read like the religious, like like history of the church part one and two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, 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 good, good. So you have background in this. Uh, uh, most, he looks around, most students don't have uh, uh, experience or background to this. It's an important book. Uh, I would like you to read or rather review because you've already read it. Uh, uh, chapter three, and I would like you to be prepared to provide a summation for the class next time to start us out. Uh, uh, so reading is on chapter three. Everybody's ready for that? Got that? Got that? Three, 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 three. All the way around threes. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll do the summation. I can have you do it now, but I'm sure sure, sure you would like a little bit of time to prepare, right? Uh, yes, sir, please. Okay, class dismissed. I will see everybody tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he will send you all out. All his books come back into his arms and he is out the door. Wolfie, later, can you help and go over the part where he was talking about the things? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What it, what it, yeah. Sure. The, yeah. the history parts. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I think Definitely. I think we should use because that was only a few minutes. We should use this class as like a study group just to catch up with him. That was intense. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot. That wasn't just me, right? No, no, it was. I couldn't keep up. Oh, <sighs> okay. I'm exhausted. It's only been like 20 minutes into like an hour class. Oh yeah, he came in, did it, <laughs> ran through everything and and got out, um, uh, you know. Uh, there probably is at that point, like a, an assistant that comes in and goes, uh, uh, here's uh, a copy for everybody of the, the syllabus. And we'll, we'll hand that out to everyone, very thick. Like clearly he has enormous expectations about what he can get through. Uh, 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 within the the the, the a semester long course, I think at some points to uh, Professor Leatherpound like approached the student and said something like, and that's when Anakis the Great said, "That's not my catapult," <laughs> <laughs> ha! and then he just like kept going with his with his speech with his lesson. Uh, uh, the next class you have uh, is math. And uh, it it is it is a professor from Quandrix. Uh, they are all about a uh, numeromancy, uh, and uh, they will will go through. This is perhaps of all of your courses the one that is the most dreaded. Uh, but uh, you will uh, give you the the name for there. Uh, Name of the instructor is Ishnarad Kant. Uh, and he's human, and and he he essentially goes through and uh, very very quickly does a little bit of speech and then an assessment of where everybody's at, and then when he re- realizes that where everybody's at, you see this look of absolute disappointment cross his face. Like, just, just he seems to look around like, like this is a tragedy. Uh, like how how ill prepared you are, even though probably some of you are very good at math, uh, but even that just doesn't seem to satisfy him. And he will say, "We will do what we can to bring all of you up to speed." And. And may the creator have mercy on your souls. Mutter to Fan, I'm like, every magic school book I ever read never had a class in math. I mean, I thought I was pretty good at math. I don't know what this guy's deal is. But... When are we going to use this in the real world? Uh, we will come to the next course which is the wheel of magic uh and uh this is an instructor 
from Prismari. Uh, you know, the Prismari College is the elemental college. Uh, uh, and uh, this is essentially looking at the various different kinds of magics and how they interact. Uh, Vince, could you roll me? Let me see uh, what kind of our list of Prismari scholars. We have a, a D12 for Prismari scholars. There's lots of them. And that is a, an eight. That is an eight. Uh, this is a muse channeler. Uh, they send blasts of inspiration out uh, uh, to, to people. And uh, when they call on you, they gesture uh, and you are, are filled with, with inspiration and revelation. You might not get exactly right. Uh, tell me about this, this Prismari instructor for the Wheel of Magic. Okay. Um, I think she's uh, I think she's a halfling. Okay. But just like a really, really big personality, just like fills the whole room um, and makes really intense eye contact. Um, Gets up by the desk and go, yes, 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 go on. Uh, exactly. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of. Like if you've ever had a really, really good theater teacher, it's that kind of energy of like, they just really want you to nail it and knock it out of the park. And like, uh, if, you're, if you're starting to get the answer wrong, like no poker face whatsoever. We get like really kind of concerned. It's almost like a conductor. She's trying to, to get you to the right spot. And, ah, uh, good, 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 good. Uh, mm. Ah, she'll, bravo. She'll mouth the right answer toward you, but she's really trying to just descend it via magic. Yeah. Sometimes it's, uh, you need a little bit of a push. What is her name? Ah, uh, her name. Let me find it. And I, I feel like I'll be able to get a great, just almost generic hobbit name because let's see. Go with uh, Salvia Heathertoes. Sal Heathertoes. Okay. Uh, she, her, as I understand? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, see, she is, she is there. She wants you to succeed. She is uh, 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 on it. Uh, and, 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 and like does lean into each of you you know, gets up close by everybody. Yeah, good, good, good. So good. Uh, and uh, 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 seems seems happy when everything is done. Like she's very pleased with the class at the end. And she says, I, I am so excited by all of you. I, 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 that the potential that I see here, I can only imagine what, what this course is going to be like. So uh, uh, take that home. You've got the homework. Uh, I will see everybody uh, uh, next class. Uh, and then you have uh, arcane terminology and lexicographic considerations. Uh, this is our Silver Quill instructor. Uh, Silver Quill is the school of magic that is focused on eloquence. They are all about that about enunciation and eloquence and so on. Uh, Talon, could you roll me, let's see, if we look at the list of Silver Boom scholars, or Silver Coast scholars, uh, can you roll me a D8? Sure, rolling you a D8. Okay. Whoop. Sorry, I got attacked by a bunch of die rolls that suddenly loaded do, 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 do. Unroll, unroll 20. <laughs> okay, okay, back to business for rolling 1D8. Did it happen? I it heard was it. a four. It is a four. Uh, this person comes in, and when they walk in, uh, there's 
It's almost like they're dripping. Uh, uh, and they're kind of dressed darkly. Uh, when they get over, you realize that maybe they're not dressed so darkly. It's just that, uh, that they've got ink kind of dripping out of their fingers. And this is an ink mancer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, they actually work with ink. Their, their magic becomes ink. They use ink to do sigils. They do both runes and written things and also living ink itself. Uh, tell me about this ink mancer. Are they male, female, uh, 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 NB, uh, uh, uncertain? Uh, what kind of people are they from, Talon? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think they're NB um, okay. in the sense that um, there's a lot of uh, ambiguity in their features. Um, uh, let's see. Sorry, what else did you want to know? Yeah, like, like, tell me, uh, like, are do they look human? Do they look elven? Do, do, uh, uh, do they, are they something else? Yeah, uh, I think um, by by all appearances uh, to people, they appear human in the sense that they have the average height stature. They don't have any of the defining features that would make one say like, "Oh, that's just a really tall dwarf or or, an, or a you know a short elf uh, kind of thing." So, but. Other than that, other than this, this sort of like human, um, uh, you know, uh, um, physiognomy, well, you know, human anatomy, he is rendered very, uh, very, um, ambi you know, like ambiguous in the in, gen in gender like construction. Yeah, there, 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 there are a lot. Of, there, he doesn't. Uh, uh, they don't present a lot of signifiers. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, great, great uh, language. Well, what name are they going by? Uh, I was thinking Ignis. Um, let's see, Ignis Dark Glass. Here, let me write that down. Uh, and Ignis Dark Glass again. The the ink kind of pours out. There there, there are probably a couple times when he, they. They realize that they've spilt more than they want and they kind of draw that ink back up into them. Uh, when they do their arms come back, you will see that they do have shifting ink tattoos uh, on their arms. Can they kind of see it that maybe uh, rolling? It's almost like when they talk, when they're saying the words, like some of that is getting written on their skin at the same time, whatever they're saying is being written out. And you hear a little, you hear something like that that faintly resembles a scribbling noise, yeah. you know that, yeah. that that goes with the way the the, the lips move or the, the 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 tongue or throat would move, and it makes excellent ASMR. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and they they are very they they are very focused on this idea that everything that we do here is based on a certain amount of precision about getting things right. When things aren't quite right, things don't happen the way you want them to. When you're not quite accurate in how you encant, how you write, how you draw ruins, that's when problems happen. Haste makes waste. And by waste, I mean death and doom. So I just, what we're gonna learn in this class is certain methods of handwriting and recording and so on, and ways to look at magical tomes, to approach them in a way that is safe, to draw all the information to us. So I've been told this class is not fun, but I enjoy it. So we will see what you think. I can, I can respect that. Yeah. I can, also, so cool. I'm rolling this character in another game. <laughs> um, uh, can I yeah, can I yeah. add that uh, sure. Professor Darkglass and Professor Leather Pound are really close. They're either together or like best friends. Yeah, like like probably uh, uh, when when Darkglass finishes up, you see that that Leather Pound is kind of waiting uh, for them, and uh, 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 clearly. They, there's sort of a excited conversation from Leather Pound and kind of a base level, you know, 
response from dark glasses. They, they head off down the hall. Uh, and it will come to your last class of the day. Uh, as you can get on towards evening, you've had a lunch break. Uh, uh, so let me ask you, let, let's, let's, let's ask you this. Uh, uh, is there, do you all go to a cafeteria or do you buy food or do you go to prepare food at, at the dining hall? What do you think? What, what's your thing, Fonzie? Um, I think if we're, if we're all doing something together, what I would almost picture is each, each of the dormitory houses has a dining hall. Ours is not in great shape. Mm -hmm. So we tend, um, we, we tend to try to make friends with somebody in another dining hall, just like go through their cafeteria buffet, load up and then just head right back to our own. Hall okay. Does that sound fine for everybody that kind of, uh, uh, you don't really want to go back to your own houses, little little dining area, kind of uh, mooching off of uh, uh, some other people there. Uh, we'll have to figure out some some characters from these other other classes as well. But uh, when you get to this last class, uh, in each of the other classes, you've had students from one of the other dormitories kind of making up the other half of the class. Uh, but when you get here to this introduction to the dark world class, it is just all of you from Darsk Sul. Um, the rooms are kind of, it's kind of dimly lit. It's this like tall windows where they have the, the curtains closed. So there's just this like slash of light that comes through into to there. Um, and uh, you will all kind of come in and uh, sit and, and wait. And there's that uncomfortable wait after the, you hear the, the chime of the class time and then you're waiting how long do we wait do we wait two minutes do we wait five minutes do we make 10 minutes and, is there and I, interesting things to look at in the room like uh yeah there are, are specimens there are, and jars and things yeah like weird specimens things swirling around lots of books with locks on them <laughs> uh that kind of of thing uh lot, lots of of things to secure uh, stuff in here. Assuming a professor effort does show up, I think they show up just as Fonzie's like, no professor is showing up and has gotten up to leave. <laughs> yeah, I, it's at that 10th minute that the door comes open and you will hear these heavy footsteps and he's, the, the instructor sees you first because you're already out of your chair and getting ready to leave, Fonzie, and you will see the headmaster. Stretching. Gr Gravast Ireland, the dwarf. He has a, a very tall hat on. And uh, he will say, Alphonse, isn't it? Uncomfortable chairs. Uh, yes. So, my name is Gravast Dyerland. I will be your instructor this year for explorations of the dark world. And he'll walk up to the lectern. Uh, uh, you see him kind of look, it's clearly taller than he is. And uh, he'll look at that and you see him stop and make a note clearly to tell somebody to change the lectern in here. And uh, he will say, Very good wizard hand from one of you. Yesterday in that mishap. Does anyone want to volunteer as to which of you knocked over the glass receptacle in the hall when you decided to, I think, as the kids say, cheese it you did say it was a good wizard hand it was well executed whether it's 
morally good is an entirely different question. And when he says morally good, Wolfie also, he almost starts convulsing. He is so like nervous and so many bullets. As his talent, to say, Mr. Wolfie. I think he like is ready to give a confession, but it literally cannot come out of his mouth. So he's just like, like a fish out of water. He's so nervous. <laughs> Uh, Fen is just like buried in the syllabus of the math class because it was thick enough to be a barrier <laughs> and a distraction. I mean, isn't proper execution of a spell its own kind of morality? Mm -hmm. Alan just profusely apologizes for Alphonse. Uh, so, so, so are you are you naming? Alphonse, though, in your apology? Yeah, I'll say, just, we're sorry about Fonzie. We, he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> ah. In, in fairness, Talon, based on what the professor is saying, it sounds like I did know what I was doing. <laughs> Wolfie has uh, now, like, is looking mortified that, like, Fonzie would say that giftedness is any sort of axiomatic argument for morality. <laughs> Alan's it, already already crying in his hands. It, 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 it's all right. You've done well, young Alan. Very well. So that didn't sound sinister. Uh, so, Mister Fonzie, you're saying that simply being skilled and executing something properly invites a certain positive moral judgment. When you put it that way, I guess that is what I'm saying. What? Uh, what a striking attitude to have for a young man at your age. I'm sure that will get you far. Thank you. I hope so. Do you have a contrary view, Master Wolfgang? I think at this point, like... Wolfgang has been like had his hand up and he's been like like trying not to answer like he's he's ready to debate the morality of the situation what's what's your take on that master Wolfgang uh well sir according to uh Archon the third prophet of the second age he very clearly states that morality is set by the gods and it is not uh an objective construct of man oh, thank you for letting me answer that sir I mean, the counter that I'd make to it is if the road to hell is paved with good intentions, then maybe good actions are at odds with that. Maybe it's the road to which the celestial plane is paved. Maybe. You said a series of words there, Fonzie, but I'm not sure that taken together, they made... I might have gotten ahead of myself. A coherent thought. Master Oakenshade, you come from the fear bulk, uh, uh, a noble people. What is your take on this? Sir, we acted rashly, sir. Please don't tell my parents. Let us set aside the specific <laughs> incident. <laughs> For the moment, but let's talk about the general question of is doing something well, does that make it morally justified? I think you have to ask yourself about the outcome. So outcome, result, determines the morality? Sometimes you have to do less nice things to increase the niceness. Interesting, interesting. All right, so a situational ethical view, interesting. Master Talent, what do you think about this, about this question? Where, where does morality lie? 
to, to tell you the truth, sir, I've never been given that much thought to it. You know, I've always felt that uh, doing like it's it, it's in finding answers. It's in you know achieving uh, understanding and enlightenment that we find you know ways to become good to 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 to, to make society better. Interesting. These are all interesting viewpoints and I will take them into consideration for I'm going to teach this class and I hope to mold your young minds in a certain direction while allowing you enough freedom to make your own choices about which path you wish to descend on. We will be exploring the differing temptations of darkness and the kinds of threats that you may face in your existence here in the school or perhaps in the larger world. There are no tomes, there are no texts for this book, for this class. I will assign readings to you. You will go to the, the bibliotheque to check on those, to read them, but some of it will be simple questions that I will put to you, hypotheticals for you to explore. There will be a little bit of bestiary knowledge. We'll get that, that's sort of required by the school, but my vision of what this class is about is much, much richer. And now, and he steps back to the table He reaches over and you can see that there's a, a, a box there. He says, I have prepared something for all of you. It kind of cuts open the top of the box, slides it, you'll see him open the lid. And he says, I baked a cake. Would all of you like a slice? I made it myself. Oh, I'm I'm famished. I'd love a slice. Ah, our and dorm your... doesn't really have an operating cafeteria. Absolutely. Let me. I'll just slice you some cake. A nice big piece for Mister Oakenshade. Who, Fairbulk, you're a growing young man. Talon, cake. Um, takes the cake out of immense fear of offending. <laughs> Try it, yes, Professor. It's a dark chocolate with a cherry filling, and uh, I made a, a kind of a cream cheese frosting with just an absolute hint of almond to it. Yeah, Talon Tal like holds a plate nervously, and also he's a little reluctant to eat the cake, but he's trying to, mostly because he's not into chocolate or cream cheese or any, anything that's in this cake. He's just like, I don't want to offend anyone. Arsenic has a hint of almond. <laughs> Master. I, 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 yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, Fen, you were going to say something? Um, I'm wondering if there is any sort of check I could make to determine if it is poisoned. Ooh, that is a good question. Let's look what would be appropriate here. This maybe feels a little bit like possibly Arcana? Oh, yes. Does that feel right to you? It does, because if it's poisoned, it's magical poison, yeah. I'm sure. Let's have you make an Arcana roll. Did doop, that doop, doop. make a roll? It oh. made three rolls. We'll just take the first one. Okay. Uh, you don't detect any poisonous magic in it. And so I just smile and say, thanks for the cake. <laughs> and he um, goes around and he delivers a piece of cake to each of you. Master, Master Alphonse? A piece of cake. This this looks so decadent. I really feel I ought to eat it as a dessert. But thank you. Shall I give you a a napkin to wrap it up to take it back with you? Is that what you would like? 
Thank you. Here, just make sure you get the napkin back to me. Thank you. Uh, Fen, it is delicious. Like it's it's really really good. Mm. You know, just that. Uh, uh, Wolfie, do you eat yours? Bonzi, you should try the cake. It's delicious. <laughs> Wolfie's not trying to be obnoxiously pious, but legit the um, the vows he has taken like prevent him from having such delicacies. So, oh, so and and he'll touch the 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 cake as it's sitting on your desk, and he kind of moves it just slightly back and forth. So He's this like, is an unwanted temptation it. for you. Uh, it's certainly not unwanted, sir, but. Um, I would merely say that the mortification of the flesh is more important to me at this moment, with all due respect. Well, and he lifts it up, make sure it comes right by your nose so you get a waft of it. I'll just take this back then. Do I have to make a will save? <laughs> no, I think you, you made that determination. <laughs> Mr. Talon, I, I see you're not eating. Is, is, it, is it not to your taste? So Talon is like, like, sort of like picking at it on the fork, and he does take like a few, like small, really small bits, but mm -hmm. um, he's carefully trying not to show any like um, disdain or a uh, distaste or dislike of the cake. It's just like it, eating it, it bit by bit. It, is it, it? It seems like it's not to your taste. Is that the case? Um, I, I. Why don't you tell me what you do like? so that I can plan for a future event. What is it that would make your mouth water? Uh, Talon like uh, says, my, my family, we, we usually prefer a uh, pie and, and, and you know, this is just really- The rich. great I'm conundrum, pie versus cake. Yes, I understand this war. Uh, a, a fruit pie perhaps? Um, sir, yes, sir, but I, I, I wouldn't ask. Uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, dare, you know, request a whole pie for, you know, just for just for one person. Oh no! If I have, if I have a pie brought, it will be for everyone here. Well then, once you've finished up, you are excused. Tomorrow, sorry, next class, I will have a particular conundrum to put to you. Uh, 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 yes, Master Wolfie? Um, out of character, did you say it was up to me if I wanted to roll a will save? Yeah, do you want to roll a will save? Okay, I don't play D&D, but like, is a will save, is, would that Let's be see. apropos? Yeah, so we don't have exactly that kind of thing, but let's look here. Uh, I think that would be a, da, 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 da. I think that would be uh, an insight tech. Insights about understanding, about knowledge, about self-knowledge, and it's a wisdom-based check. So why don't you make a wisdom check? Okay, sounds good. Uh, <laughs> uh. I could do it as standard saving throw, but we'll do it this way because I like having the skill checks. Okay, sounds good. If you pass, I'm going to take that uh, slice of cake as it goes towards the front of the class. <laughs> oh, I rolled a six. So that's a six. And what's your, what's your bonus on your insight? Um, it is... Um, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not sure. That's oh, okay. Four. Oh, plus four. So that's a 10. So indeed, I, I, I think as it's being lifted away, your hand involuntarily shoots up to grab the edge of the little plate. Indeed. I think I'll tell him, um, Sir, I'm also. Oh, did you did you did you want this? I'm I'm also commanded to obey those in authority over me, sir. So, if you were to 
you know, tell me that I need to eat this for school. Uh, certainly, I, I could accommodate that, or you could accommodate, or we could accommodate that. You should eat this cake. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, Master Talon, if you're not going to finish your piece, it seems like Master Oakenshade is perhaps still a little peckish. Yeah, and Talon like offers like the like you know the slice of the cake, like only the tip has been like you know yep. forked off basically, and hands it over to the fan. Oh, thank you. And it's delicious. And then the headmaster will, will dismiss you uh, uh, and uh, say that he is looking forward to seeing all of you at the next class. And he will head out. Let's take our second break here. For Five real minutes. That, yeah, go on. For real, that cake does, does sound divine in real life. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I do like chocolate and cheese too. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll take five. Again, I'd like to do a scene with the four of you gathered somewhere after this first day of classes. And this is a kind of an orientation day. So you had to sit in on each of your classes. Typically, you're going to be doing uh, half the classes three days a week and the other half the other three days of the week and then have, have Sundays off. Uh, so uh, it'll be more like a college uh, uh, kind of uh, thing rather than a, a high school everyday kind of thing. So you have some time in between classes to do your extracurriculars and things. Uh, tell me, uh, Fonzie, where is this scene take place? Like, where are we? Are we back at the dorm? Are we at another dorm? Are we at the 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 Fire Jolt Cafe? Are we at the the like the one of the, the cafeterias? Where, where do you think we are? You are muted. There we go. I think that we're back at the bibliotheque because Wolfie has to find a copy of that book. And we're like, we've decided to divide and conquer. Like we're all going to get out a copy of it, read parts of chapter three so that we can help make sure that Wolfie's able to present um, in an effective manner a summation. So you found that that groups uh, can can like get little study rooms there in the library. So you're, you're in one of those, so you can talk uh, and exchange information. Uh, so can I, can I add a little yeah, bit of yeah, detail? Um, I think the rooms, um, uh, like you enter them and they are four rooms of floor and no ceiling. And once you enter them, they actually like float up so the, the, the library is just this gigantic cavernous room and it has like private rooms floating about on the, on the okay. ceiling. Yeah, uh, like up in the upper, upper wings, upper sections there. Um, uh, yeah, and so you are, are there in this room. It has a, that, just that little feel. Probably all of you have, have been subject to levitate uh, at, at, or tensors floating disc at some point in your life. Uh, so you'll recognize that sort of weird feeling. Um, so when we come in, uh, uh, Fonzie, what are you saying to your cohort? Um, so I, I think I'm trying to, uh, I'm getting a little bit of a background on just how good the cake was and just vicariously experiencing that. Like, I'm describing it to you layer by layer. <laughs> Uh, can I be honest? That was kind of terrifying. Oh, but it was I so think, good. I mean, I don't think he was very happy with me. I think if if he has the ability to poison just one slice, it's going to be my slice. Um, I, I was like, did how we, do you... I'll, I'll test that for you. <laughs> oh, but he's very good. So it would be like, he would know that I was going to do that, that I would give it away. So if you give it away, then it won't be poisoned and you can have some. How do you bake a, a cake so that 
only one slice is poison. That's I don't think that that's how it works, Ponzi. Out of character with magic. That's how. Yeah. With magic. <laughs> um, that doesn't I have to be an out of character is... statement. <laughs> In character with magic. The, the po- so the poison just swirl the poison just swirls to the end that's going to Fonzie. Well, or it I'm, could be I'm a pitch... curse that like if Fonzie is the <gasps> one curse. eating it, then if somebody with no moral backbone eats of this cake, that that'd be a good spell. We should see if we can make a spell like Man. that. But I you think, had a moral I argument. Think as they're talking like this is the part where i'm like reteaching the lesson that everyone missed you know and uh and i'm I and mean, i'm going like you guys you're missing the best part this is when retro's private tutor poisons him so that he himself can take the throne oh oh fancy do you still have some of that cake yeah i haven't i haven't i'm not after hearing that, I'm not going to touch this. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to cast uh, Detect Magic on the cake. <laughs> detect Magic on the cake. You can absolutely cast that. You guys, various... I'm doing D&D things. There, there, is, there is no role necessary. You will cast Detect Magic on the cake. The cake is not magical. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so if it's not magical and either the entire cake is poison to Talon's point or none of the cake is poison, maybe Ben's already eaten some of the cake. (laughs) It's not. I guess we better get back to the history lesson. And I think Wolfie will continue to drone on at this point. I think I I take a bite. Uh, What, or actually, what I picture is Fonzie is about to take a bite here in the library, and the librarian walks by and is just like, can't eat in the library. I, I think that's probably uh, uh, like a, a mat that they, they're, it's probably because you're in these floating rooms. Uh, I imagine that there is a, a, a voice that will call it, there is no consumption of food or beverages within the span of the library. Is it like over a magical PA system? Yeah, it's just like a magic <laughs> mouse that appears in the wall and, and says wow. that. Please put the convestible away. I put the napkin back over it and put it back in my satchel. Well, that was boring. Ben, what are your thoughts to the group about, about this day's classes? Like, what are you meditating or musing on? This is the best, uh, best place ever. This is, this is amazing. I mean, just look at this room. It's a floating room that brings us two books. It is just awestruck. And Fen, or sorry, I'm Fen. Hey, Fonzie. You really should try that cake. It is just phenomenal. I can't eat it in the library. Then you should take a break. Go out, eat the cake. It's delicious. And we can hear Wolfie joining on, and he's like, <laughs> that is when the catapults were brought on. Alan is listening, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Taking Rapidly notes. and with a lot of intention. Yeah. Oh, and crap. We're supposed to help him with this report. <laughs> Uh, uh, talent when, when there's a there's a break here what what are you saying to the, to the group about your experience here this first day um i mean other than the, the other than seeing our dorms meeting our teachers and having those classes like that's pretty much been our entire day right yeah it's it's been packed i think well what talent is, uh really just wants to do now is to just start studying <laughs> And, you know, he says, like, you know, I can't wait to go into this lesson or that lesson. He's also looking forward to the night or the afternoon so that he can just, you know, bury himself in some of the books in the library or, you know, in, in the actual assigned readings. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I think that eventually the focus that, that Wolfie and Talon have will probably get Fonzie to either nap or focus or sit there. Uh, and and Fend, you're you're a diligent student. 
right? Oh yeah, uh, so you, absolutely. You fall, fall, fall in. Fonzie, just one question before I move on. Once you're out of here, do you eat the cake? No, we've we've done serious analysis to determine the dangers of this cake. Yes, but concluded. You mean the safety of this cake? cake. <laughs> exactly. It's a safe cake. And, and so, sounds great. Will you eat it? Oh, yeah. I'm okay. quite hungry. I was it, saving if, it for dessert. Yeah, yeah. I was not dishonest. Get outside in the cool air and you can eat it, finally eat it. And it is, it is delightful. And it's that denial of the chocolate cake for so long that makes this even more poignant and sweet. I clearly made a good decision. Fonzie, Fonzie would know that if, if you're going to do anything that's going to kill you, then Wolfie could probably help you not die so badly. <laughs> My, and is this, uh, you asking to be invited along to sample the cake? Not to sample the cake, but maybe to be there to apply, you know, CPR. Yeah, Magical yeah. CPR, Come essentially. On. Come along. Uh, yeah, uh, you can you can uh, take the additional precautions necessary, but the cake remains delicious. Uh, we will cut forward a little bit here. We are going to uh, uh, imagine that there's a montage here of that first week, of the first week of classes. We're going to go through that that montage. What do we see of Fonzie in this montage for for this first week of classes? Um, what we see of Fonzie is everything is kind of a, a disaster, his first exposure to any new subject, but somehow he, he comes in when they do like review and um, at the beginning of a follow-up class, like he knows every single beat of everything. Um, and we get in that montage kind of cuts from like him getting nothing wrong to his, the skull of his great uncle um, reciting back facts to him, uh, to him Whis whispering in. in your ear at night kind of thing. Yeah, uh, okay. to, to coming in and having more insight than was actually covered in the reading because uh, this is somebody that was there. Uh, Wolfie, what, what is the montage for you in this first week? Um. I think that um, the only kind of presentation that a Wolfie has known is um, of his father like preaching at the temple. And so the presentation, like without him really meaning to, ends up being more of a sermon. And at one point, you know, a light comes down and like angelic voices sound, and that's part of the montage. Okay. Um, and I think maybe. Maybe one student in the back like becomes a follower of Essen after uh, that. He probably gets like a C minus on it because he only covers like the history of the church part of the chapter, you know. I like that. Um, yeah. um, and then there's also um, uh, the uh, the the um, the sword master teacher mm -hmm. doing like some beautiful flurries that. He then has to follow and he's just grabbing a blunt object and just like doing haymakers and like spitting around and he's like no you know and he's like footwork yeah you know and he's just trying to crush things and it, it's like not working for the teacher fen what about for you what is the the montage we see of you during during this this first week of classes um yeah so i think our math teacher uh professor kant um we have me and Professor Kant talking after class about this math proof that I did for him, where he's like telling me how substandard the work is, but Very it's shoddy. like yes. 20 pages long. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, look right here. You can see the proof is solid. I don't understand why, what, what argument do you have against this? And he's just like blowing it off. Um, I also, uh want to say and the uh the 
nickname of the teacher was Mothball. Mm -hmm. um, I have a conversation with Mothball about uh, Witherbloom and, okay, great. I can see the nature study. When do we get to the good stuff? And uh, just kind of picking his uh, brain on uh, the school of my choosing. Um, and I think we've got a scene in my uh, animal wandering class mm -hmm. um, where I'm actually like carrying the horse back to the barn instead of riding out on the horse. Th that's not exactly what we asked for, but uh, it's sufficient. All right. All right. Well, he got tired. Understandable. Uh, and uh, I think then that, that uh, you know, you'll have uh, a day off a weekend uh, and that, that sort of Sunday of that week is the, the day that uh, you are instructed to, to go out uh, and you will see all of the different booth set up. Did we get uh, talent's montage as well? Oh, no, we didn't. We forgot that. I'm sorry. Talent, well, what's your montage for the week? Thank you. I think um, what Talon is doing is uh, mostly like uh, the, st the study montage, but I think he's also trying to, um, because he's so nervous about the school that he's trying to, you, you catch him in the mirror or you catch him in the, uh, you know, halls, just sort of like trying to puff up his confidence and saying like, you know, you deserve to be here, you know, you, <laughs> like, what's this? you can do this, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I think even in one particularly tense encounter with, let's say, uh, what was the name of that professor with the cake again? Um, uh, the professor with the... Cake. Oh, uh, that was the headmaster, Gravast Dyerland. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a one, another time, like, um, he, he had to see uh, Gravast, um, the, and it had a tense encounter. And I think in leading up to that tense encounter, you see, like, he's in the bathroom and he's got his hands in the sink and he's wet his face to wake himself <laughs> up, you know, to like steal himself, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Then we see the neck, the door opening to the big headmaster's office yeah. and coming yeah. in, probably trembling a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, can I add one more thing? Yeah. Um, I think like in a Buddy the Elf type moment, um, Wolfie has um, these tiny little cookies that he's making over the fire and he puts them in a tiny little plate and he brings them over to like the spider people and uh, our anthropomorphic spider played by Woody Harrelson comes out of his little spider hole. And he's like, cool man, takes the cookies and like slams the door as well. He's like, yeah. uh -oh. I need to, put, just, I need just, to Photoshop Woody Harrelson's face. Yeah. Uh, on that Sunday, you will see that the, the whole sort of concourse area of the campus is set up with the booths, the banners, the markers, uh, and you can see that uh, this is the day uh, that you will get to go out and choose your extracurricular activities. Um, and I think that's where we're going to start next time. Uh, I will get the, the full list to you so I don't have to read them out loud. Uh, uh, and the jobs. We'll make those choices. And then uh, uh, we're going to have a little incident uh, and put you on scene. And uh, we'll get a little... Uh, uh, a little combat. Uh, I was. I probably hold off until the end of next time to move us up to level three. We'll we'll kind of do it at level two, but we'll do the the milestone at the end of next session. Does that sound okay? Uh, uh, if everyone is okay with that, I'd like to do just a quick stars and wishes. Uh, uh, so stars being things that you like, people's play, things in the game. Uh, that wishes being definitively things you'd like to see more of, things you'd like to see next time, things you'd like to see less of, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, so we'll, I usually do them both at the same time. Uh, so, uh, Vince, let me start with you. All right. Yeah. So stars, I, I've been really enjoying everything that everybody's bringing to their characters. Um, try to get in specifics, but, uh, Cisco, I, I love, uh, Wolfie's, uh, it's, it's zealotry without being off-putting in any kind of way. Just like finding opportunities to 
uh, circle back around to that, that really strong focus. Um, and I loved the image of uh, the sermon as lecture uh, at the end. Um, Talon, uh, so Matthew, I, I'm loving his nebbishness and I'm really, really eager to see how Talon comes out of his shell or comes out from underneath his, his wing um, because I have a feeling that he's going to really cut loose at some point and it's going to be delightful and terrifying at the same time. So very excited for that. Um, and, and Nick, um, I, I really enjoyed our scene at the cake and just you, you going after everybody else's, that was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like I felt a tiny bit off of my own A game this week. Like, I think I came in really, really strong last week, sometimes maybe even like a little, uh, possibly overbearing, um, and actually I'll credit Lowell with that by kind of uh, throwing Fonzie off his game in that last class when we got to dig deep and and put him off uh, put them off balance. So I think that that's that. Even though I I perceive it as a weakness on my part going in, I think it's a fun thing to explore with the characters. So I kind of want to do a bit more of that of knocking them off that uh, showy kind of confidence. Awesome. Anything else? Uh, that's me. Okay. Uh, uh, Nicholas. Um, yeah, I had a great time today. I was thinking about kind of the highlights, and uh, I really liked Vince when Fonzie was trying to philosophize and really kind of like came, dug himself into a corner and decided, you know, that's that's a word cloud that's not going anywhere and just accepted it. I thought that was um, a fun scene. Um, Cisco, I enjoyed Wolfie's battle of wills that he lost with the cake. I thought that was a beautiful scene, so star for that. Uh, and Matthew, I think the like instant betrayal of Fonzie was a very telling scene for your character. I enjoyed the heck out of that. Um, Lowell, I want to thank you for starting with the painting of the scene. I think that was a solid start to this session. Uh, and also for our spooky but kind professor who gave us the most delicious cake. Uh, wishes. I think I wish I, I really enjoyed the scene where we were, all got to philosophize together. That was nice kind of uh, us getting to talk amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish for more of that. I wish for more inter-character conversation and development. Absolutely. We'll try to do that thing, the, 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 the Whedon thing, where we, we have some all groups and then we'd like, like play with the alternate pairings of people to, to, to get some of that. That's a really good point. Cool. Uh, Cisco. All right. Um, I'm going to start with Nicholas. Nicholas, start to you uh, for playing the big guy so well. That's usually the archetype that I love playing. And so um, I always like what you bring to that. Um, and the first session, uh, we didn't do Stars and Wishes, but that moment where like, I got to ride you as we were looking through the books was awesome. And then Absolutely. the other session. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll star that one back. That was great. <laughs> yeah, that's like a retroactive star. And then uh, start for this session for, uh, you know, carrying your mount, you being the mount for the mount. Beautiful. Love that. Um, for Talon, I will also give you a star for confessing on Fonzie's behalf. <laughs> that was like such a great moment um, and such a cool dynamic to the group that like you are the guy that's just like, I would like to say sorry for him. Like, super love that. Um, stuff for, uh, yeah, stuff for Lowell. A couple stars for you, Lowell. Uh, so cool that like we got to roll for the teachers and what they were like. Like it was like, that was like an in the moment thing. That was so cool. And then I love all the story game techniques that you use, the painting the scene, the uh, allowing us to have so much control 
over the NPCs and asking about the teachers and just rolling with that. Um, anybody out there watching this that think that you have to have control of all the NPCs and everything about the NPCs, just know it's okay to give your players control of that because it's amazing. So stuff for you for that. And then Vince, um, I love the fact that you're like the known person in the school, like that adds an awesome dynamic. Um, I love like the storyline that's already developing vis-a-vis -vis your patron. That's awesome. And then um, I love the detail about the drama teacher personality. So yeah, that was yeah, I love that. Like that was a cool detail. Um, and also about the centipede, that was like both terrifying and like just absolutely awesome. So Nicholas, that was you, right? I love that centipede professor. He's the best. Yeah. Who who brought the centipede professor? Was that you, Nicholas? That was me. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was like a really good, 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 good detail. And then like the praying mantis detail. Love that. Um, but yeah, but for you, Vince, me personally, I love the level that you had Fonzie at last, um, last session and like how much you were leaning into that like archetype, that bad boy archetype. <laughs> like the, like my drama teacher used to say, <laughs> like, I would rather you give me more and then me tell you, and then I get to tell you to pull it back than not give me enough. So like, I'm, I'm cool with it personally. So I guess I'll give you a stuff for that, so. Uh, any wishes? Yeah, um, I want part two of the morality debate that we're having with the headmaster. Okay. Yeah, I'll be reading up on my um, apologetics this week. <laughs> so that I can be out of character, I can be ready for that debate. And I'm going to read up on utilitarianism. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Matthew. Yeah, so. Um... Uh, well, what, what has been, you know, the curse of being last means that everything that could be, almost everything that could be said has been said already. Um, but um, <clears throat> I do have stuff, which is that uh, stars to Nicholas for Fenwick and Shade. Um, I really like the sort of popcorn eating energy brought to today's session, where it's like, <clears throat> you know, everybody's got their own like individual tensions going on with regards to like the, the situations they're in or the people they're interacting with. And when it comes, when, when it all came to like, an, ape, an, an uh, a high moment with um, this very sinister seeming professor and his uh, uh, you know delectable temptations, you know Fen not only partakes of it but like the cake itself serves as the moment where he's just like yeah mm -hmm, I don't you know yeah sure you know just watching what everybody else does. Um, um, Wolfie, I love uh, you know this sort of like. Um, this 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 scholastic energy that you're bringing to the, to a clerical character that um, I hope like really flourishes um, and uh, I think again it provides unique energy to the group like I, I know that sounds like a we're I'm I'm banging the same thing over and over saying unique energy to the group but I feel like um, on the ground level we created characters who could not be more distinct from one another and that was not like orchestrated yes. so it's kind of cool <clears throat> and. With regards to Fonzie, like, um, I almost feel bad, like, because your character is like uh, so exciting in that bad boy, quote unquote, bad boy energy, you know. But by nature, the character I made, like, uh, you know, you know, yes, we see him like uh, throw him under the bus. We see him like, you know, say mean things about him, you know. And I think, you know, that speaks only volumes only to how well you're portraying the character. That my only response to the character is to like double down on like the complete paranoia nebishness and fear of my own character and i think um that's you know start you for 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 having such a strong portrayal that can induce another like you know um strong response from me as well so yeah um and another uh star to lowell for easing us in into this world you know, I know it's been a slow start, but it's also very exciting because, you know, I think it's a world that I don't have a lot of relationships with in terms of like the whole magic school with wizards kind of uh, milieu. And I'm really, really excited to, to see where it goes. Um, with the morality thing that you guys talked about, um, 
I want to see that expressed in a very literal fashion. I want to see the magical trolley and the magical train tracks with the magical hostages. And, you know, you pull the lever and there's one, and you kill either one magical hostage or five magical hostages. Okay. <laughs> or, or whatever. Yeah. So um, I know we're all kids or teenagers or 20 somethings, but being forced into such a, into difficult choices, um, I think will be super exciting and show us who we really are. <laughs> that's a really good point that's uh, a great observation all right i've got that noted down thank you all so much uh for all of that i'm just gonna bump the mic uh, uh i am going to stop the recording <laughs>